Well, praise the Lord and good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. And tonight we're going to be digging into Luke chapter 16. And uh, we have some scripture in there we're going to take a look at uh, today. And uh, it's something that may be familiar to some of you and may not be to others of you. So, well, praise the Lord. But um, before we start, let's go to God in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you and praise you for the opportunity tonight to get into your word. We thank you for your precious word, Lord, and just ask that you would teach us from your word tonight. Help us to grow in you. Forgive us, Lord, of the many sins and trespasses, Lord. Uh, please, Lord, and we do thank you for, for Jesus Christ, our Savior. We thank you for grace and mercy that's offered. And Lord, help us to always look to Christ. Lord, help us to um, overcome those things that, that come against us in life. Lord, whatever they may be, whether it's uh, you know, sickness or illness, or whether it's just uh, trials or, or tribulations, Lord, we just pray that you would help us to overcome those things in you. Lord, we pray for strength tonight, your peace tonight. And Lord, I just pray for your healing for those that need a healing touch tonight. In Jesus' precious name, amen and amen. Well, tonight we are going to look at Luke chapter 16. So if you have your Bible, please turn it, turn in your Bible to Luke chapter 16. And we're going to go all the way down to verse 19. Now, we'll read 19 all the way through to the end. And this is something uh, that uh, very important to listen to. And Jesus is telling us, and it's not a parable. He doesn't identify this as a parable at all. So this is an actual event. And he's telling us. Let's read. Luke chapter 16, starting at verse 19. There was a rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried and in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that Thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that Thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses, and they have the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses, and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Wow, what an account. And this is, there's so many things in this account that, that uh, jump out to us as we, as we look and we see this, this, this situation. Um, going back to verse 19, the rich man, you know, clothed in, being clothed in purple. Purple was a very expensive uh, uh, coloring back in in those days if you were to, to go buy uh this it would be it'd be very very costly and it would show that you had some um status in society it was a uh a color of kings and uh of royalty and this uh, was not easily harvested uh how they how they were able to color the linen this way so it was a very expensive process and him being clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day, he had more than enough to eat each and every day. And uh, this 
it shows it gives you a picture of uh, wealth and and status uh, that this rich man had. And then there was in verse twenty it says, and there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Well, it tells you everything about Lazarus here. Number one, that he was a beggar. He he, he and he uh, was laid at his gate full of sores. So Lazarus was in bad in in a bad situation. He was. Uh, he was dependent on others for food. He was full of sores, so he obviously was had some sort of sickness, illness, um, and he was laid at this rich man's uh, gate, you know, in the hopes of eating even the crumbs which fell off of the table as they fared sumptuously. Now, the rich man had more than enough to eat. Lazarus didn't have anything to eat. He was very, very sick. And uh, showing that he was laid at this rich man's gate um, it was a it was a, a real symbol here of you know looking for mercy you know looking for mercy from this rich man to supply you know some some sort of even the crumbs off the floor he was willing to eat those as he couldn't provide for himself being in this dire situation what was bad was even at this place where he was so weak that even the dogs came and licked his sores I mean can you imagine how how terrible the situation was for Lazarus, not even having enough strength in your body to keep the dogs from licking the sores on your body. And uh, it came to pass that, you know, Lazarus died. And it says that he was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. Now, some of you may be saying, well, what's Abraham's bosom? What's that all about? Well, before the Lord Jesus Christ died, on the cross for our sins, Abraham's bosom was the place where the righteous dead went. They didn't go to hell. They went to this place called Abraham's bosom. Um, Jesus makes the way of salvation available to all mankind, you know, to be absent from bodies, be present with the Lord. We're able to, as they anticipated and look forward to the coming of Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, who would pay the price for the sins of all mankind. They look forward to that day Jesus came. He led captivity captive. He gave gifts unto men. You know, he, he set the captives free. He did all of this, you know, in, in, um, you know, today, if you were to die and you had Jesus as your Savior, uh, you go straight to be with the Lord. You, 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 to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So you go to where he was because he has come. Um, today, we look back to the cross and forward to, and in, in anticipation, our great hope to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. So in those days, they were looking forward to the coming of Christ. And so, um, you know, this is, that's about Abraham's bosom. So just in case you didn't have any background on that, there you go. Um, so um, it was interesting how it says here he was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. So, you know, um, he was very much cared for. You know, as he, he died and passed into glory, he's cared for. He's taken to Abraham's bosom. He is there with Abraham. And, and it says the rich man uh, also died and was buried. And the sad thing about this rich man was, although you have all the wealth in the world, where did he end up? Not in a good place. You can't buy your way into heaven. It doesn't work that way. You can only come by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It says here, um, and in hell, he lift up his eyes. This is where the rich man ended up, in hell. And he lift up his eyes in hell, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So he sees, he sees off in the distance, separated by this wide gulf that neither neither can pass. He sees Abraham, and he sees Lazarus there with Abraham. And it's interesting here in verse twenty four, um, what he says. Look at this. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. So isn't it interesting that that the rich man cries out to Abraham for mercy and asks him to send Lazarus. So a couple of things kind of interesting is the fact that he still is trying to exert a social position send Lazarus as if Lazarus was lesser than him that he could send him make him go do this you know give him a job to to bring water to me you know I mean it's very interesting how um 
even being in hell and the torments of hell, he he's still the same the same person who is who is uh, the sin that got him there is still there, still present with him, even in hell and torment. And um, he says that he's tormented in the flame. You know, anybody thinks that they're going to hell and having a party, well, they should take uh, take notice of this, that this rich man lift up his eye being in torments. Not just one torment. Not just torment, but torments. And he sees Lazarus, Lazarus um, Abraham afar off in Lazarus in his bosom. Another thing, too, is in hell, there is no... Um, lessening of your perception of what's going on it's actually keenly more um it's more more than right now and why would you say that randy why would you say it's more well let's look at a couple of things did the rich man ever meet abraham there's no indication that he had ever met abraham before and yet he knew who abraham was was there any indication that he knew who Lazarus was other than being a beggar at his gate before? No indication. However, he knew exactly who Lazarus was and he knew exactly who Abraham was. He had more perception being dead at hell than he did when he was alive. So we see here that... Um, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. So not only is he in a in a hell, but he's in torment in he describes the flame. Jesus described hell as being a place where the worm doesn't die and the fire is not quenched. So is, are the flames real? Yes, they're very real. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. This should be a lesson to you. You know, a lot of Christians um, go through some difficult times in this life. Just so you know, the, uh, you know, the trials of this present time, the Bible says, is not worthy to be compared with the glory that would be revealed in us. You know, the, the, the tribulation of this hour, the the difficulties of this time, they're not even worthy to be compared with what God is going to do when you get to heaven and be with Christ. So, you know, this rich man, he had good times in his life, but now he wasn't. You know, didn't Jesus say back in, um, and I believe it's in Matthew chapter 5, let's go over it real quick. Matthew 5, 4. Maybe it was in 4. No, it's 5. Um, yeah, remember this. What Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5. Um, Blessed are they, in verse 4. Matthew chapter 5, verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. See, you see here, blessed are they that mourn, they shall be comforted. You know, this is a this is um these contrasts, you know. Yeah, right now you're going through a difficult time. Right now, the there are real trials that happen in life, real persecution, real sicknesses, real illnesses, uh death is real, we see it, we see the the impacts of that in this world, we see the impact of sin in man's rebellion against god we see that in this world we see um all of these things even in our in our own selves we mourn at our failures we mourn at our weaknesses we mourn at at the things that we um man we don't like right because we're still at war with this flesh we're still at war with the ideology of the world and we are at war with satan and yet there's a time of peace coming for us. Peace that God gives. Joy that God gives. You know, we are looking forward to that day. And it says here that, um, it says here in verse 25, But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. 
And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they uh, pass to us that would come from thence. So there is, a, there is this great gulf fixed between them, showing that there was no way to pass. So the decision that you make in life, the decision that you make now with Christ is a permanent decision. Like, in other words, if you don't choose Jesus Christ and you die in your sins, you're lost eternally. There's no change in your mind after you die. There's no getting out. There's no relief. It is a permanent, lasting decision that you will forever regret if you turn from Jesus Christ or reject him. If you know Jesus Christ, that is a decision that you will never regret. You will always be grateful for. You will always be thankful for. And it is a eternal decision. It is a decision that is that is forever. You know, when you die in, in you die in Christ, you have the assurance that although our outward man perish, that inward man is renewed. We know that 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 though though this body is going to be going back to the dust, yet Jesus is going to give us a new body one day we know that we know that absent from the body is present with the lord so you know the the joy in it is that knowing that the decision you make for christ is man that's that is a decision that let me just tell you you'll never regret but if you don't choose christ you will eternally regret that let's look at the let's look at some more he says here that in verse 27, then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. So he's still trying to boss Lazarus around. He's still trying to, you know, he hasn't changed at all. Send him to my father's house. I, for I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. So he wants him to send Lazarus to his house to testify to his brothers about what's going on. Now, not only is he trying to do that, I mean, he has some concern or care for his brothers. He doesn't want them to go to hell. Um, he does want them to hear the truth. And we're getting to that. Abraham's going to address that. Abraham saith unto them, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. See, they had the law. They had the Old Testament. They had the prophets, you know, prophesying, talking about Jesus. Though all of the Old Testament points to Christ. All of it does. And so they had the scriptures that pointed to Jesus. They pointed to the way, and they could have chosen the correct, right way, but they didn't. Well, we don't know if his brothers did or not. We don't know. Um, but we know the rich man didn't, and hopefully his brothers did. You, you hope that they, uh, you hope that they turned from their sin. We don't know one way or the other. But the rich man, he had Moses and the prophets too, and he chose his riches over what was right. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. And that is so true. It's still true today. Jesus rose from the dead. 500 witnesses on, you know, to his resurrection. 500 Separate witnesses, plus. And yet today, people still don't believe. You have 500 people who can attest to the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. And they still don't believe. They have Moses and the prophets. They have the Son of Almighty God who rose from the dead. And they still don't repent. Well, some men and women do, praise the Lord. There are some that repent. They hear the good news of the gospel and turn from their sin and trust Jesus Christ. Thank God for those that, that have a hearing ear for the gospel. Sadly, many don't. But this is a choice that you have to make in life. Where do you want to spend eternity? You can spend eternity with the Lord, be comforted. Or you can reject him and be tormented. It is your choice. But I would suggest to you, choose wisely. Because the choice that you make is forever.
Well, God bless you. I pray that you got something from our study tonight. And uh, next Wednesday, change of location. We're going to be back at the church. So praise the Lord. God bless you guys. And we'll be still broadcasting. For those of you who are not able to make it out to the church, we will be broadcasting uh, live just like we are doing right now, but from the church. So praise the Lord for that. We thank God for the opportunity to be back uh, together. And we just give God the praise for all of that. And so I pray that you can um, tune in tomorrow night for the Encouraging Word broadcast at 6 o'clock with Pastor Brian. And uh, we are just excited and looking forward to hearing more about uh, what God is doing in your life. So uh, please take the time to uh, text us, uh, put a post here on the, on the church page or put it on this video, and let us know what God's doing in your life and how we can pray for you. And we love you, God bless you, and we will talk to you again soon. Have a blessed night in Jesus.